Yeah, yeah, I'm serious. Nope. The video We're starts now. Uh this isn't like a super rare original version of the book. It's actually just some kind of reprint from the 90s that I got. I think I got this in the back of an action figure at some point. But, you know, it had sentimental value and I thought it would be cool for him to sign it. I wonder what I'm going to wear to Comic-Con tomorrow. Maybe there's a big and loose here. Big rock over here. Now, once again, just use brush strokes and release a little amount of color. So, what is your favorite Marvel character to write for? My favorite Marvel character? Well, I have a couple of favorites. Uh, the Hulk, I wrote it for 12 years. Jamie Madrox, and Spider-Man 2099. Yeah. Love um, There's a new Spider-Man game coming out next year. And I, yeah, I know you've written for Edge of Time, correct? Yes. Uh, do you have any involvement with the new one? No. Okay. Uh, what color is Miguel O'Hara's suit? Is it blue or is it black? Punisher in the manga verse is a a female geisha who tickles crime bosses to death with a whip. Got that off of the internet. Okay, well, I'll tell you, if you enter Japanese punishment into Google, you're going to be entering a very yeah. strange world. I will not go into anything beyond that. Okay, why is Ace so tough? Ace from uh, Spider-Man. The Spectacular Spider-Man annuals. Um, well, he's a badass. Jacket and the glasses. Well, Ace was basically supposed to be Prince. Oh, okay. Although, that makes sense. Yeah, he was basically Prince. Although, as it turned out, Mark Beecham, the artist who drew him, yeah. basically looks just like that. Really? Yeah. Mark essentially based Ace on himself, That's which great. broke me the hell up when I first met Mark. And then I'm going like, holy crap, you're Ace. Okay. <laughs> he looked just freaking like it. So you, you did write for Edge of Time, correct? Yes. Venom bombing Alchemax? I have no recollection whatsoever. Well, that answers it. Thank you. You're welcome. That was, that was really great. Boy, I should really get a microphone for next year. Professionalism? What's that? He did have some pretty solid answers. It was cool to meet him. He's a really awesome guy, and Peter David, if you do somehow see this, thanks for putting up with me. That was my first interview ever, and it was a pleasure to meet you, and I'm definitely a really big fan of your work. Ah, yet another successful trip to one of my favorite places in the world. A giant room full of sweaty people in costumes awkwardly stumbling into each other while buying overpriced merchandise for things that will be irrelevant next year. Nah, I'm just kidding. I really do enjoy Comic-Con. It's a place where you can share a whole new culture with people. You can meet your idols, make new friends, reunite with old friends, and you can take sleazy photos of every girl in a Slave Leia outfit. Sadly, I didn't have a ton of time to pull out the camera and take footage or pictures because my friend kept yelling at me, saying, Don't be that guy from found footage horror movies who keeps being obnoxious and filming everything before the monster shows up. Which is pretty fair. All the footage after the interview in this video was recorded by my friend David because he went an extra day and needed something to do. Seriously, David, I can't thank you enough. You really saved my ass. This video was almost just the interview, plus like four minutes of a black screen. So, you know. Thanks for looking out, buddy. So, I have a fun game for you. Try and find me in any pictures of Denver Comic Con this year, because I don't have a single one. The only pictures I got were after I got home and was covered in sweat and regretful angst. Just go to Facebook and look up Comic Con or something.
It'll be like Where's Waldo, but with a ginger Spider-Man. I'd be surprised if you could find any. This was a record-breaking year for the convention, and I only went one of the three days. Or just not do that, because why would you waste your time scouring hundreds of photos for some random D-bag on the internet? So the thing is, I don't think this is actually a genuine DVD that they sold in stores. I think this is some kind of super illegal bootleg that someone just tossed together. So if I ever wanted to actually review this, the footage that I'd get from it may run the risk of having like a Cartoon Network or Disney XD logo in the bottom of it. He offers to help him find planets fit for consumption, yet not containing life, comma, the Herald of Galactus. It's a, it's a Better Call Saul figure, and I've, I've been watching that s series lately, and while it's no Breaking Bad, it's pretty good. Look, it's the more successful one of the two Odakirk brothers, because I guess the other one just did Kung Pao, and that was it. Wait, did he do Jimmy Neutron? I can't remember. You know, they should sell these in Toys R Us. I bet that would go over well. Okay, so Carl Urban was there, and I don't have a single solitary thing for him to sign. You know, and so I thought about giving him this, and then as soon as I got up there, just apologizing for not having a Judge Dredd comic. I never actually made it there in time because the line for Stan Lee was so impossibly long. When we got to meet Stan, uh, he was very quiet, and, you know, he actually is not quite as energetic as he seems to be in a lot of the movies. I mean, his voice sounds exactly the same. It was, it was cool seeing him in person and, you know, just getting a second to actually talk to him. Speaking of being a nerd, I also got a whole bunch of art. So yeah, this is a picture of, uh, oh boy, that's a lot of glare. This is another one that's the same sort of thing. It's a picture of Tom Holland Spider-Man, but it's very shiny and chrome and it makes a cool noise. And this is uh, just a cool, really, so, so, uh, like, subscribe, favorite, and share, and more, and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and...